Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about what is possibly the fastest shifting transmission out there, Koenigsegg's light speed transmission. And we're going to get all into how this transmission actually works. Now this video is brought to you by Autotempest.com. I'll get more into that later on in the video, but as many of you may know, I'm going to be replacing my Honda S2000 with something different. So I've been using Autotempest quite a bit lately as it's an awesome website to look for used cars. So the light speed transmission is used in the Koenigsegg Jesko. It is a nine forward speed transmission. There are seven clutches eight if you count the clutch for the differential. This car is producing 1600 horsepower on E85. And so I've got drawn the light speed transmission here. This is a simplified diagram in order to understand how it works. It's not the exact layout of how the gears and everything look. And then here on the left, we have a simplified dual clutch transmission with just four speeds. And the reason why I drew this is to help illustrate some of the advantages that this light speed transmission has. So first let's do a little walk through here with this transmission and make sense of it all. So we have our engine, five liter V8, twin turbo. It is sending that power directly to the input shaft of our transmission. So this is all fixed together. There's not actually a flywheel. All of these gears will kind of rotate with the engine and that is going to be essentially the flywheel. Now everything drawn here in black is all fixed. So all of this is rotating together. The colored gears are on bearings. So this is on a bearing, these three right here are on a bearing, and these three right here are on bearings. And so how this all works is you've got three shafts, and then on these shafts you have separate gear pairs. So you have compound gears here, rather than like in a dual clutch transmission, uh, in this case how it's drawn, you just have two shafts, and then you have each gear pair on those two shafts. So here we're sending power first from the engine to this shaft right here. It then has the choice between any of three, these three gears. Now each one of these three gears has a clutch pack connected to it. So how this works, you've got your clutch pack uh, with the gear, it's paired with that gear, and then the shaft itself can be disconnected or connected with that gear using that clutch. So if you close this clutch pack in red right here, clutch pack number one, that will pair these two gears together and that will force this shaft to rotate this shaft. Now at the end of this shaft, we have three additional fixed gears, just like this first shaft has. So for example, let's say we lock up this first clutch pack. These two here are completely open. So power is gonna come from the engine to this first gear right here and then over to these three gears and then rotate these three gears. Now these three gears right here, once again, each have their own individual clutch pack. So they're all rotating individually and you can choose which one you want to send power through. So in order to send power to the rear wheels, ultimately with any gear, you're going to have to close two clutches uh, in the case of forward gears. So let's just walk through the example first gear. So for first gear, we're gonna send that power over to this first little gear right here. We've got that aggressive gear ratio. We close up this clutch pack right here. These are open. We then close up clutch pack number four. And so then we have an aggressive gear ratio, another aggressive gear ratio, and that's our most aggressive gear ratio that we could possibly have. Send that to the rear. So we're just closing packs one and four. Every other clutch pack here will be open. So power is gonna come across from one down to four and then to the rear wheels. For gear number two, we open this and we close this and that's all that's required for the gear shift. You open one clutch pack, you close another clutch pack. So power comes across from one down to four, instead now down to five. If you want third gear, you do one and now six. And so you can do that for each gear pair. So you've got nine total speeds using six gear sets. So let's say we want to then shift from third to fourth. Well, we're gonna open up one and six, and then we're going to close two and four. So now we're going power to here, and then power to here, and then if we wanna to go to fifth or sixth gear, instead of going to four, we go over to five, we go over to six. And then for gears seven, eight, and nine, same thing. You open up this, this one is also open, power comes across over to the third clutch right here, and then to one, to two, to three, so that's six, seven, eight. So this will be gears one, two, and three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, depending on which one of these gears you have selected here on this secondary shaft. And then for reverse gear, as you can see, power is gonna come across, it's gonna switch directions, and then it's gonna switch back to the original rotation of that first shaft if you go through this compound gear. Now, if you just go straight across, you will change the direction. So for reverse, you open up all these clutches and you close clutch number seven. That reverses the output shaft's direction and you drive backwards. 
wonderful. And then just a very quick example of shifting uh, because you can shift from any one gear to any other gear extremely quickly. So we're gonna go from ninth to second just to demonstrate that. So ninth gear, we're in three and six. These are both closed, everything else is open. We want to go to second gear, which is one and five. So we close, we open up three and six, and then we immediately close one and five, and that puts us in second gear. So you're switching two clutches on, two clutches off simultaneously, and you make that gear change happen. Extremely, extremely fast. So how does this compare to a dual clutch transmission? So here we have a simplified four speed. Generally speaking, they're gonna have more than four speeds, uh, but we're just using this to better understand how it works. Uh, so we've got two separate shafts. On one shaft, you have gears one and three. On the second shaft with the second clutch, you have gears two and four. Now I've just drawn single clutches here to simplify it. Generally speaking in a dual clutch, these are gonna be wet multi-plate clutches. And same with all of these clutches. These are all gonna be wet multi-plate clutches. So, you know, that's just a durability thing, uh, makes them last quite a long time if they're bathed in oil and there's multiple discs. So here, let's say we're in first gear. Well, this blue clutch is going to be engaged and we're gonna be sending power from here to here. We have a selector, so this collar will engage this first gear using the selector fork and will send that power from here over to the rear differential. So this gear is on a bearing on this secondary shaft and this collar rotates with the secondary shaft. So they'll mesh together and force power to come across and then to the next gear. Now let's say we want a really fast shift to second gear. So what we can do, because this second clutch is open and not engaged, we can actually mesh this gear right here and pre-select it using this shifter fork. So this shifter fork will force second gear to already be engaged. So first is engaged and the clutch is engaged, so we're sending power this way. This is not engaged, this secondary clutch right here, but we've already selected the next gear. So all that needs to happen in order for the gear shift to occur is you open that first clutch and you close the second. So it's an extremely fast transaction because all you're doing is switching which clutch is engaged. And so you'll immediately shift power from that first gear directly over to that second gear. So you have an extremely fast shift and you don't have a total loss of torque while you're doing it. Very cool advantage of dual clutch transmissions. Now on a track, this is wonderful. You're never really gonna run into many cases where you have to shift multiple times down or multiple times up. It's fine to go through each gear individually. On a road, however, that's a much more common occurrence. If you floor it on the highway, things like that. And it also may not guess on a road what the next gear is. So on a track, it sees you're flooring it, it knows you're going to upshift. Uh, on a road, it may not know what you're gonna do next, so it may not know which gear to select. So let's say you're in third gear, and you want to shift to fourth, well, it might have selected second because you're on the brakes. Or let's say you're in fourth gear and you actually wanna go down to second gear because you're on the highway and you wanna accelerate quickly. Well, obviously, because the same color is used for second and fourth, it can't pre-select second gear. So the gear shift is gonna take significantly more time. Versus with the Koenigsegg Lightspeed transmission, all that's required at any for any gear shift is simply opening and closing clutches. So it's a completely different design as far as how they do it. And the major advantage here is that, you know, not only do you have all of that speed when you're on a track, but when you're on a road, it doesn't have to do any predicting. And if you're on the highway, it can shift down quite a bit. So you could say it's very good on both road and track. Did someone say road and track? Well, it just so happens that if you take the June issue and turn to page 16, you will find an article that I wrote on the Koenigsegg Jesco transmission. How cool is that? So Koenigsegg employs a technology they call UPod Ultimate Power On Demand with this transmission. And simply what that means is, so if you're using the gear selectors on the steering wheel or the hand selector in that center column, either way, there are two notches for that shifter. So if you're downshifting, let's say you're in eighth gear and you pull it all the way back rather than just one notch, one notch will give you one downshift, one gear, all the way back puts you in the ideal gear for the maximum power. So if you're on the highway cruising, you want as much power as possible, you pull that gear lever back, that gear selector back all the way, and it puts you in the ideal gear based on what speed you're at, and then you just rock it off. So lightning quick shift, get in that power band of the engine, and then just fly. So a very cool little system they've incorporated. It also works with upshift. So if you wanna to go to the maximum uh, forward gear, basically the most efficient gear at any time, uh, you can do so very quickly uh, with that double notch upshift. So a neat little uh, technology they've incorporated to take advantage 
of the fact that this transmission can go from any one gear to any other forward gear extremely quickly. Now, how fast, you might ask? Well, I asked Koenigsegg the exact same question, and their response was pretty incredible. They said that these clutches can open and close in as little as two milliseconds. And the other very cool thing about that, on top of just being insanely fast, is that you're never going to lose positive torque as you're working your way up through those gears. Because let's say you're in first gear right here, and then you switch to second gear, there's overlap while one clutch is opening and the other is closing. And so you never have uh, just completely zero torque. You always have positive torque occurring because of that torque overlap as those two clutches switch their positions. So very cool that they're able to maintain that. Some of the other advantages of this transmission, uh, of course, the size of it. So this is part of kind of these compound gears. Instead of using, you know, nine gear pairs for nine gears, they're using just six gear pairs and, you know, three shafts and then six gear pairs giving you those nine gear ratios. So they're able to make it significantly smaller. In fact, Koenigsegg claims that this is less than half the length of the seven speed transmission used in the Agera and it only weighs 90 kilograms. So that's with all the fluids. So very compact, uh, so small in nature and also not that heavy. So very cool. And then of course the other obvious advantage advantages of the shift speed and the shift flexibility being able to go from any one gear to any other gear extremely fast. Now, what might be the disadvantages? Well, of course, this is a very low volume transmission. They're just building 125 Jescos. Uh, so as a result, cost, of course, is going to be high, but I think the people buying a Jesco probably know that. The other part, uh, when I look at this, I think about is efficiency because you know, let's say you're in first gear and you've got one and four open. Well, that means you've got these five or one and four closed. Well, that means you've got these five other gears uh, with their clutches open. So that's, you know, some heat loss that you're going to have associated with all of those open clutches. You've got all these gears. Uh, so of course, you know, it's not going to be as efficient as something like Koenigsegg's Regera, where you have a direct drive uh, and you're using a hybrid system to kind of fill the gap. Uh, whereas in this case, there is no hybrid. You need to have gears in order to get that engine in its happy range uh, versus the Regera just using that direct drive, extremely efficient, and then using electric motors to fill the gap where the engine can't produce, you know, that insane wheel torque because of its gear ratio. Now, many of you have asked, what am I going to be replacing the Honda S2000 with? And again, a huge thank you to Autotempest.com for sponsoring the video. The truthful answer to this question is, I don't know. Uh, that said, there are definitely things that I do want it to be. I'd prefer it, of course, to have a manual transmission. Uh, I think I do want it to be rear wheel drive. Uh, and then aside from that, I'm kind of open to it. So I've been looking at uh, the newer Miatas, which I think are really awesome. Perhaps an older M3, which I also think are really cool. However, I never have actually driven one. I've also been looking at the 370Zs because they've really come down in price. This car has been around forever uh, and I do actually really like the steering in that car. So it is something that I am a fan of. But that said, again, I am not totally sure what I'm going to end up with. Regardless, Auto Tempest is an incredible tool for looking at used cars. It compiles all the different search results from the major used car websites out there. So I'll include a link to that in the video description if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.